Ryan Electro here. It's been a while since I've made a video, but um, this is what I've been up to. This is the apparatus we're going to use to try to make magnetic gas. So I'll explain to you how it works. Now, first things first, we've got our um, UV globes here. They're 500 something nanometers. I think they're around the absorption spectrum of the argon gas. So I think they're in the right wavelength. So they'll be wide to the outside. Again, they're only held on by tape at the moment, just to give you a rough idea of how things go. And, um, well, the next step is, uh, for the tungsten boat, which we've got in there, the way we're going to heat that up, that is through the microwave oven transformer that I've uh, modified with Coltus to make metal. Uh, that's powered by Variac, or controlled by Variac there. Now, I got this design from Applied Science, He's used a very similar method to heat his tungsten boats. I think he was plating mirrors in one of his videos. And I've, um, I've taken that idea from him. So what I've used as electrodes is copper pipe filled with investment material for the heat resistance. And to, so I can pull a vacuum in the chamber. And then bent over and the tungsten boat is screwed onto that. Under the tile. So this is, all goes through a tile. And... Under the tile, the, the, the copper tubes go through there and they've been plastered in and they go to the bottom there and that's where the microwave oven transformer is being connected to. Now, I'll give you a brief demonstration of that. That's the main switch for it. Uh, you can see that there's some yellow oxide from the tungsten boat being heated up repeatedly, but I'll just turn the variac up. And there you go. That's what we'll be using as a heat source to vaporize the metal. Now, as you can see, that gets pretty hot. And you can see there on the side, I've got some um, stainless steel pipe protecting where the tubes, the ionizing tubes, will go up into the vacuum chamber. I'll just turn that down. Now, As you saw before, the vacuum chamber sits on top of there. The vacuum will be pulled from there, and then the magnetic gas hopefully extracted from this port here. Now, on the bottom of the, the tile there is the inlet for the, the argon. It's just a um, normal fitting there that I can connect. There it is there. I can connect a, a, a hose to that. Now, what I plan to do is uh, feed the argon in through this tube here, which will have another ionizing tube in there. This will primarily or preliminarily uh, ionize the argon before it gets injected into the vacuum chamber there. Now, it's important that I try to vaporize things in a vacuum because the two materials I've got here is the, the Neo Magnet and some iron laminations which I've cut into small pieces. Now I've looked up the vaporization temperatures for these and they're around the 15, well, they'll vaporize about 15, 1600 degrees or even higher for the Neo. I think the Neo is 20, 2300 degrees C. But in a vacuum uh, I can get the Neo to vaporize at about 1200 C. Now the tungsten boat and same with the iron. The tungsten boat only goes up to 1800C, so I can't bring the metals up to their boiling point. But, like, if you put a cup of water in a vacuum, you can make it boil at room temperature. It's the same principle for metals. So if you put a metal in a vacuum chamber, and that's the whole idea of this, um, we should be able to vaporise them at a much lower temperature, which is more achievable with the tungsten boat design. Now, the tungsten boat... Uh, idea I got that from Applied Science in one of his videos. I think he was using a similar method to um, to make some mirrors, to plate some mirrors with uh, certain types of metal vapor. But what I've done here is exactly the same as him. I've, I've controlling a modified um, microwave oven transformer through a variac, and that'll give me a, a varying degree of heat on the tungsten boat there. Now you can see in in the boat. The pieces will just sit in there and that will allow me to, to vaporise it 
in a vacuum. Now once the vacuum is achieved I'll be able to release the valve which will put in pre-ionized argon gas into the chamber and I've also got two ionizing tubes here to continue the ionization process and hopefully get a covalent bond between the vaporized iron and the ionized argon so in the end hopefully we should get magnetic gas now if we can achieve that we can draw it out through this um, this valve here we just open it draw it and close it uh, having this closable is about so I can achieve a vacuum in this in the, in the vacuum chamber here now these bulbs here are 3M SP bulbs I can't give you the exact uh, part number because there isn't one on it but um, I'm pretty sure that their frequency is like I said is around the 500 and something newton meters which is uh, argon gas absorption spectrum um, that's the tube we're going to inject the magnetic gas into one end and block it off as you can see on, on the end of it there's a mirror There's a tape there that will allow us uh, if I put a mirror on this side too and just have a small hole there for the laser or put a big beam laser there like Mescal has a fat beam um, that will allow us to basically shine a light through the magnetic gas to test out Myers principle this area here we've just machined down to get to reduce the wall thickness there so we get the copper coils closer to the magnetic gas so because this is just a a test piece we, we're only going to use one coil uh, put the gas in have one coil and basically flash the laser in and out of there and see if we can get a uh, any sort of signal out of the coil that we've landed on the outside there now for the ionization or for the ionizing I've got three different methods that I can use this is the, the transformer that I've used in the past you've all seen examples of that this is a variable frequency drive that Mescal has donated uh, it works off a car coil which I haven't got yet and a 9 volt battery but um, this is for a Jacob's Ladder kit so this will be applicable for that as well and also the alternator VIC now we have made some progressions with this we're not sure if it's going to work or not but what the hell we're going to give it a go anyway so all these three devices will at some point be connected to the ionization tubes either together or one device on these two and one device on that whatever whatever combination we need I'll just give you another look under there that's how everything's plumbed up now for our seal here for the bell jar we're using flexible silicon it's a silly product wet area silicon there white and uh, that works pretty good also for the bell jar itself what I've done is gone to the two dollar shop and I got myself a glass vase it's fairly thick and that's what I'm using now we've drilled the top there with a diamond tile drill same with these holes here we've drilled them with tile drills and then plastered everything in we've plastered especially the electrodes in for heat resistance because uh, silicon would because these get pretty hot so silicon would probably burn so what I've done is use plaster so I've drilled the tile put them through connected everything up and then used plaster to put them in also you can see there the thickness of the plaster is quite thick but that makes these fairly rigid like they don't bend and I can yeah so anyway um, I'll keep you posted. It won't be long now before we will try to make some gas, so post your comments. Bye for now.